Hey there and welcome back to NBA 2K17. My name is Pete and today we complete the first year of NBA 2K17's My Jam or My League mode with the Los Angeles Clippers. Now the Clippers have one of the strongest cores in the league with Chris Paul, Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan and let's begin right away at the point guard. Paul is the team's highest rated player and despite being 31 years old, he is still far more than just serviceable. At the other guard you will likely start with sharpshooter JJ Redick, even though the game might default you to Raymond Felton with Redick as the starting small forward. That small forward spot should probably go to either Jamal Crawford or Wesley Johnson, who is the better choice in my opinion, and allows Crawford to come off the bench as a scoring option, a role that has served him nicely in the past few years. The power forward and center spots are no-brainer, at the power forward you will start with Griffin, at the center with Jordan. So far so good, let's look at who backs up your starting unit. The Clippers bench is not the youngest, but at least there are no glaring holes at any position. For the point guard you can choose between Austin Rivers or Raymond Felton and I would advise going with the younger and higher rated Rivers. Felton could in theory see minutes at the shooting guard, but if you kept Crawford on the bench, then this will be his spot and Felton will likely not get playing time in your normal rotation. Another option at the shooting guard is Alan Anderson, but he is one of the worst players on the team and should not see minutes. For the small forward you have a number of options, you could either use Crawford again, which would then open up minutes for Felton at the shooting guard, or you could go with 39 year old Paul Pierce who is about to retire. Alternatively, Lukimba Amute at the power forward has a skill set that is moderately useful for the small forward and having him back up the small forward opens up the backup spot at the power forward for Brandon Bass, so both of them win in this scenario. Next to Bass and Mbamute, you also have Bryce Johnson listed as power forward, but I would keep him out of the rotation and see how he develops. He's only 22 and on his rookie contract, so you can afford the time. Behind the Andre Jordan at the center, you will probably have to go with most spades, while 19-year-old Diamond Stone is still a few years away from being able to contribute. Your final rotation could then look something like this. Paul, Reddick, Johnson, Griffin and Jordan as the starting unit, with the Rivers, Crawford, Mbamute, Bass and Spades backing them up in a 10-man rotation. No playing time for Felton and Pierce, but this lineup gives minutes to the 10 highest rated players on the team. Let's now have a look at the big issue for the Clippers, contracts. With Redick, Bass and Felton, three players expire who could theoretically be part of your rotation. At least in the case of Redick, you should be able to feel his loss. And while Bass and Felton will likely not get much better, it is still worth thinking about how and if you can replace them. Alan Anderson also comes off the books, but at 34 years old that's probably for the better. Apart from Redick, none of the guys can be re-signed during the season. Now I said contracts are the issue for the Clippers and these four players entering free agency is really not the reason for that. The big problem are player options. Both Chris Paul and Blake Griffin have player options coming up and from the playthroughs I did so far, I feel confident in saying that they are very unlikely to take those, meaning both of them will enter free agency. Mo Spades and Luke Mbamute also have player options coming up, however they should be more inclined to exercise them, although there is no guarantee. Paul Pierce then has a team option coming up, but given that he is 39 years old and likely retiring, I see no reason to pick that up. All in all, three of your four best players could enter free agency after the season, leaving your team decimated with a few aging role players. We don't want that to happen, so I will once again cover the offseason a bit more extensively. One thing to keep in mind here, for all those three players you have bird rights, meaning you can go over the salary cap to re-sign them in free agency. Now draft picks, and when it comes to draft picks, the Clippers are a bit on the weak side. They have no picks in 2017, only a first rounder in 2018 that is also a protection backup, then no first rounder in 2019 and 2020 their first round pick is once again a protection backup. So you will likely not be able to add a large number of significant pieces through the draft, but looking at the Clippers situation that is likely also not the direction you want to take. And last but not least, cap space. And yeah, the Clippers might have spent a few million dollars in the last few years. Currently sitting at a nice 20.5 million above the cap and in the luxury tax, the Clippers do not have financial flexibility this season. Next season, a large amount of the cap gets freed up, but then again, 37 million dollars is not all that much if you want to resign two All-Stars and another player rated above 80. And now before we go into the moves, here are, as usual, your three key questions that need to be answered going into year one with the Clippers. Number one, what do you think your championship window is? 
The Clippers are without a doubt a team that can go after a ring if one or two more solid pieces are added. However, make sure not to wait too long, as a few of the key players are getting older and older, given that you can resign them. A 36-year-old Chris Paul is likely not going to be a key to a championship. I would personally give the Clippers two, maybe three more years with the current core before the championship window slowly closes, and you should think about bringing in young talent after that. Number two, are you happy having two pretty large contracts on bench players? Both Austin Rivers and Jamal Crawford earn a sizable amount of money over the next few years. Crawford could get $14.5 million at the age of 38, while Rivers has a big player option coming up down the line. Now I'm not saying that you should get rid of them, especially Rivers is a good piece for the future and winning a championship undoubtedly costs a few dollars, but keep an eye on their performance and evaluate their value from time to time. And question number three, are you confident that you are able to cover up the deficit at the small forward? Apart from the small forward position, your starting five looks stellar. If you have Wesley Johnson started at 3, he will be by far the lowest rated player in that lineup, and depending on how you use him, that could show. So consider trading for an upgrade or signing one in free agency if you're not happy with the current situation. Now, as usual in this series, I always name a few players that I consider untradeable. And for the Clippers, that list is pretty short and it only contains Paul, Rivers, Reddick, Griffin and Jordan. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. Here are your three moves to make as the Los Angeles Clippers going into year one in NBA 2K17's My GM or My League mode. Move number one, change Luke Mbamute to a small forward. Now normally I mention position changes as optional things between the lines. In this case, however, that's a bit different. Seriously, changing him to a small forward is one of the craziest jumps in overall rating I have seen so far in 2K17. As he fits much better in your rotation as a small forward anyway, assign him that position with the power forward as the secondary option, and you should see his rating jump up by 4 points up to 80. That boost is also quite important, because he tends to drop off by 2 or 3 points in the offseason, and keeping him assigned to the power forward spot would have him end up at about a 73 overall next season, and you might want something a bit higher than that. While we're at it, one more quick thing about changing positions, you can increase Austin Rivers' rating by one point if you sign him to shooting guard, however that is not as critical. Having him listed as a shooting guard might also screw up your rotation if you don't handle substitutions manually, so I would keep him as a point guard, at least for now. Next season you can then make that change, allow him to play backup shooting guard as Crawford will likely retire, and open up the backup point guard spot which is a bit deeper in free agency. Move number two, flip Alan Anderson for a younger prospect. Yes, I know, not exactly a high profile trade. The fact is this, while we could make a few other trades, none of them would come close to the results that we can achieve in free agency. I consider trading Jamal Crawford, as he will very likely retire by the end of the season, but it's really hard to get someone who can take a spot in the rotation in exchange for a 36 year old player on a rather large contract. With Crawford we also have the added bonus that retirement will get his contract off the books and even if he sticks around for one more year we can still trade him next season. Right now he is too valuable and at the same time doesn't give us anything of equal value back. So Anderson it is, he is 34, will become a free agent and we really don't need him in our rotation. Should the injury bug bite, Raymond Felton can play both guard spots so Anderson is the odd man out. And he could for example be traded for Darren Hilliard from the Pistons, at 23 years old he has a team option coming up and should become a decent role player. Alternatively Josh Hustis from the Thunder, he is 24 years old, has a 2 year team option coming up and again should develop into a serviceable player. Another option would be Cheek Diallo from the Pelicans, he's only 20 years old, a bit low in his rating, but that can be helped by switching him from center to power forward, as he is also slightly undersized for the center spot. I went with Anderson and a second rounder for Hilliard, but assigned him no minutes in the rotation. Now one small thing before we continue with move 3, if you can re-sign Reddick during the season then of course feel free to do so. It should be cheaper and you have one less thing to worry about later. 9 out of 10 times he will want to test free agency however, so you will have to bring him back then. Since you have his bird rights this should not be that big of an issue. And now move number 3, accept the luxury tax as a friend and enter free agency. Actually, before you do that, a quick look at the options. Griffin and Paul will likely decline their player options and the same might be true for Mbar Mute in spades, especially if you raised Mbar Mute's rating in the first place. Take note of the fact that you do not have bird rights for spades in Mbar Mute, so they will have to be signed first if you want them back. If you grab Hilliard, then he should have a team option coming up, and since you will waltz over the salary cap anyway, there is no harm in picking that up. 
Now, given the fact that both Paul Pierce and Jamal Crawford have more than likely retired by now, the Clippers now have the following priorities. On top of the list, of course, bringing back Chris Paul, Blake Griffin and JJ Redick, or players of equal value. I just want to point that out, because while you are the one that can offer the best contracts to these guys, if you are able to sign Steph Curry instead of Paul, then by all means feel free to do so. Keep in mind though that you can only go above the cap for players you have bird rights to, and Curry is not such a player. Another priority is filling the hole at the small forward, and even if you started Mbamute here with his 80 overall rating, that will go down and you could add another all-star in free agency to really make the Clippers a contender. Also important is filling a few backup spots in the rotation. If Crawford has retired, the backup shooting guard spot will now be open. You can either look for a replacement in free agency or give it to Rivers, like I mentioned earlier, but the latter will only open up the backup point guard spot. The fact remains, if Crawford has retired, one of the two spots will have to be filled, so look for someone here. The same is true for the power forward and center spot, depending on whether or not you bring Spades back, and also depending on where you stick him if you do, either the power forward, the center or both positions are in need of a backup. And also on the list is bringing back Lugumba Mute or a player of equal value if he declined his player option. Now let's put these in order. The players that we hold bird rights to will come last, as they are the only ones that we can go over the cap for. That means the most important issue is the starting small forward. And let's look at who's realistically available. Kevin Durant and Gordon Hayward will probably get offers from their own teams that you won't be able to compete with, but if you're feeling lucky, throw an offer their way. I would focus on a guy like Otto Porter or Rudy Gay. Porter has the age factor, but is a restricted free agent, while Gay should be a bit cheaper. Make an offer to both and see who bites. Now do not proceed to the next day, but let's focus on Mba Mute next. There are not many players that are at his level in free agency, so I would simply bring him back. For financial reasons, it might actually be smart to change him back to power forward just before the season ends, that way his rating is lower and he is more likely to either accept the player option or come back for cheap. That would be borderline cheating though. Now, given that you should be able to sign at least Gay and Abba Mute with the right offers, the backup spots are next. Let's look at the guard first. I'm at offers to Tim Hardaway Jr. and Ian Clark at the shooting guard, as well as to Yogi Ferrell and Brendan Jennings at the point guard. Depending on who bites, we can stick with Rivers at the point guard or switch him to shooting guard. And up next, the backup big man. Resigning Spades is a good idea, as he is cheap and pretty high rated in this year's free agency class. Next to him, I made offers to center Tariq Black and to power forwards Michael Beasley, Jermichael Green, Terence Jones and Patrick Patterson. But the number of solid big men is pretty high, so feel free to look at other options as well. And now, on to the three big names. Offer desirable contracts to Paul, Griffin and Reddick. For Paul and Griffin, you will likely have to bring out 5-year max deals and then skip ahead one day. Now comes the tricky part, the order in which to accept contracts. Generally speaking, you want to sign all players whose bird rights you don't have first. Also, if you have made offers to multiple players at the same position, pick the one you like best and decline the others. For those players who are still mulling offers on day one, make sure that your offer is still the best on day two, otherwise make them a better one. Now, if Crawford has retired and no player options were accepted, then in total you'll want to sign eight players during the offseason. That's a backup guard, a backup big man, a starting small forward, Mo Spates, Luke Mbamute, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin and JJ Redick. With a bit of careful planning and thanks to the bird rights, that should not be too hard and you can begin the next season as one of the top teams in the league. And that's it, those were my ideas for three moves to make as the Los Angeles Clippers and NBA 2K17's in my jam or my league mode. Actually, covering free agency alone would have been worth of making a single video about it, but for some teams it's just a bit more important than for others. With the Lakers next, I think we will go back to making a few more trades. Until then, I can say thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.